If someone was to ask uh, your parents, um, if you're older now, ask your parents, what was your normal temperament growing up? Um, was it more like this? Or is more like this? We all have our different temperaments, and, um, but the Lord today is getting at, are we humble? Are we meek? And meek is not weak, but are we um, willing to listen to God? Or are we, do we have our ears closed? I'm not listening. I, I've decided on my way. No one can tell me otherwise. The Lord wants us to have this posture before him, before him. But also to be humble before others, to learn uh, from the wise, to learn from those who are, are good people, um, who care about us, and to see what they're saying to us. In the first reading, uh, I, I mentioned to you that this should remind us of something, this, this prophecy from Zechariah. See, your king shall come to you. A just savior is he, meek, riding on a donkey, on a colt, full of a donkey. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall be banished. What does that mean, to banish the chariot and the horse? Horse is fine. What's wrong with the horse? Well, in ancient time, if the king would uh, come to his people or on a um, horse, it meant that it's time of war. That was his war horse. So he meant to, it came to his people, came to, uh, to other people, it's time for war. If he came on a donkey, then it meant that it's a time of peace. He's coming in peace, not, not for war. So you have here uh, an ancient um, 12th century, I think, from a uh, uh, mosaic painting of um, Solomon. On a donkey, that's when he became king, he came in on his father's donkey, so coming in peace. Solomon was a good king at the beginning. At the beginning, he, he was a very good king, very wise. Remember, he asked for wisdom. God said, ask me for anything. He said, I want wisdom. So he got it. But uh, it didn't end well with Solomon. He gave in to his lusts. Lusts for beauty. Uh, he had many wives um, that specifically against what God said before in the Old Testament. He um, had many chariots. God as well said, don't rely on chariots uh, when you have a ruler. He had a lot of money stored up. And uh, so all these things that God said don't do, he did. And, uh, and he was prideful at the end. And he put all these burdens on the people of God, like a lot of taxes, a lot of uh, uh, slave labor, really. Um, so much so that when he died, the people came to the new king, Rehoboam. And uh, I have my, my Bible, Bible here, Great Adventure Bible. The Bible timeline there. I need cheat sheets, so I need to see where the book is uh, in the Bible. And it's First Kings here. So the new king, Rehoboam, who's the king right here, um, the, the people came to him. And they said, your father, Solomon, made our yoke heavy. Our yoke heavy. Uh, now, therefore, lighten the hard service of your father and his heavy yoke upon us. We will serve you. So first he went and took counsel with the old men who uh, were with Solomon. And they said, follow the desire of the people and be, um, be kind to them, be gracious to them. But then he went to the young men that he'd grown up with. So it was like frat brothers. And, uh, and they were crude in their response. So, um, unfortunately, Rehoboam listened to them and says, um, my father made your yoke heavy, but I will add to your yoke 
My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. So obviously that didn't go well with the people, and that's when the kingdom divided. So you had the northern kingdom, the ten tribes of Israel, and then the two tribes of Judah to the south that had Jerusalem, that Jesus came through the line of Judah, of David, in the south. But I can see why this happened, because of the arrogance and pride of Solomon at the end of his life, and then Rehoboam. That's one of the reasons why Jesus uses this language, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. They would have remembered the yoke of Rehoboam and Solomon and, and many corrupt kings. There were some good kings, but most were corrupt. So Jesus is saying, I am the king and I'm not like the kings of old. I am meek and humble of heart. That's why we have the uh, image of Jesus, the devotion of Jesus in his sacred heart, this heart that was pierced for you and for me on the cross. This is the throne of the king, uh, our king on earth. That's the throne that he chose, the cross. The crown is the crown that he chose, not a crown of gold, but a crown of thorns to suffer for you and for me to show us how to be humble how to serve God. He won in his resurrection, but he shows us who to follow. And it's so tempting today uh, in our world to follow those who have the power, those who um, are confident, those who are arrogant and puffed up, narcissistic. And Jesus says to us, don't follow them. That's not who I want you to follow. I want you to follow me. And I want you to follow those who love you um, and are humble before God. I want you to follow those who that's their predominant stance in life. They are found on their knees praying to God, asking for God's help, and not relying on their own strength, their own power. I want you to rely on me, Jesus says to us. But in order for that to happen, in order for us to go from the kid with the hands over the ears, because we're all like that at times, we have to uh, listen to the words of Jesus in Matthew, St. Matthew. For although you have hidden these things from wise and learned, revealed them to little ones. Be careful about following the wise and learned of today. Even if they have a PhD behind their name, even if they teach at a college or a university, be careful about the experts, about the influencers. Yes, they may be very educated and may have a lot of experience in this area, and, but they may be far from God and they may be prideful. And before you know it, we're following those who are leading us into o oasis, a desert that there's no God, there, there's no humility there. The question I have for all of us today, myself included, is what are those yokes that were taken upon ourselves? Right? Because Jesus wants us to be yoked to him. He says, my yoke is easy and my burden light. But in order for us to experience his light yoke, um, easy yoke, light burden, we had to trust him. We had to follow him. Be careful about following your own designs. Because a lot of times our own uh, plans are tinged with our greed for money. Or we think that... Um, or our desire, our thought that, hey, if we just have this job and this income and, all, and, and these resources, I just need not the best house in the world, but just a bigger house. Not all the cars in the world, but just a couple more cars. Um, I don't have to get this huge salary, but I, I have to get this, this, this bump here. So in order for me to get this bump, I need to work harder, more hours. I know it's going to take away from family. I know I have to cut some corners in morality, but hey, this is going to get me to what I think is going to bring me rest, then I'm going to do it. That's not a good yoke. That yoke is going to lead us down the wrong path. 
or if we tend to put all of our trust in the stock market or in the economy um, or whatever it is, even our, our health, our, these things would be up and down in our life. But when we yoke ourselves to Jesus, we yoke ourselves to his church and to the teachings, it's not totally easy. It's, it's still difficult at times, but it's, it'll be easier than if we did it ourselves. Whenever we come to Jesus, it's easier than if we're doing it ourselves. For you've got to be humble. Here's a, not a perfect list, but I found this. Um, p- difference between pride and humility, folly and wisdom and from Proverbs. The, the foolish person is not teachable. They're like that kid with the hands over the ears. I'm not listening. I made up my mind. I don't care what God says or church says or what you say. I don't care. But the humble is teachable. Okay, I know you love me, mom, dad, and my, my friends. And so what, what do you tell me about my boyfriend, my girlfriend, about my life? Talk more than listen? I don't know. That's kind of unfair because some people talk a lot. And, and it's, that's their temperament. That's, that's not bad in itself. But are you willing to listen as well? Temper, yeah. Um, self-reliant and self-confident. God-reliant and God-confident. Are we confident because we rely on God and not on our own stuff? We don't become our own pope. We don't become our own God or our own uh, decide, decider who, what's right and wrong. We go before God and say, God, what, what have you taught us, the scriptures? What, what are you teaching us by the Holy Spirit in the church? What are you teaching me through good people around me, humble people who, yes, kind of not like what they're saying, but, but they love me and so I should should listen to them. Let's ask the Lord for the grace of humility to be able to to have this posture before before God, to have an open posture before others, especially those who love us, especially those who are good and uh, not uh, enslaved to the ways of the world. Let's take the yoke of Jesus upon our shoulders, upon our life, upon our heart, Because his yoke, in the end, is easy. His burden is light. He will help us. He will help us. All he needs is our permission. Jesus, help us to have the courage to give you permission. Amen.